Hi there, I'm still Belger, and this is Let's Play Red Dead Redemption. Mr. Marston, I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson, to settle here and build a life for yourself. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one, and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that, I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. <sighs> call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland. I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but... I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true. Especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, Let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute and he was her... Well, I, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man, in a way. But you killed people. Sure. And I've suffered for it. And that's the life I left. Or tried to leave. Ah, uh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. Ah, Red Dead Redemption. Excitement. Adventure. Herding cattle. This mission is one of several involving cattle herding, and it's boring as hell. Thank you for telling me all that back there. It must have been hard for you. I hope you understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. How are you, Miss McFarland? So, we heard the cattle by riding behind them and pressing up on the D-pad. It seems easy enough, but it's often really buggy. Mr. Marston! Drive them down the road, Mr. Marston! Good job! 
ostensibly the cattle are supposed to act like one giant AI, but they often forget and split. The cattle, having met a fork in the road, are confused and start to head back towards the farm. It takes me a few tries to get them to go up the path. They finally get a move on once I pull out my rifle. It'd be cruel of me to show this entire thing, so I'll just speed it up for you. There's no dialogue, just me riding behind the cattle. Might be your true calling, Mr. Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch. Well, we've been left in the middle of nowhere, so let's pick some flowers and head on back to Bonnie. Mr. Marston, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to uh, remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. Tough men. Then we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, and terrible winters, cholera. I buried more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiving sun. That whole herd of cattle was take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace, and men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. You're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. Sneaking around and spying and secret missions. It's preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie. We got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller, that is. <laughs> you're gonna need this, Mr. Marston. Right, now you got some rope on your belt. Let's see if we can't wrangle some horses. Now we have the best item in the game, the lasso. It's extremely useful in capturing and killing enemies. You sure have some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret who sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches would steal a coin off a dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, 
I don't know much about politics. Please, Paul, can we just enjoy the ride? I know ride? we're only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. And there's few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country a woman could do much better if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland. So, horse breaking is an activity that you can perform on wild horses throughout the map. It's only really used in this mission and at two other places in the game for 100% completion. It's pretty simple. Lasso a horse, get on it, don't fall off. Some horses are harder to break than others, but it's still pretty simple to do. There's the horses! Get that lasso ready! Rope one! We'll bring him down again! Now relax! Hold on, Martin! Don't lose him! <laughs> And that's the extent of what this mission requires. We have to do this a couple more times though. I didn't talk over the last one, but when the horse is bucking like this, you can see Marston leans left or right. You need to push the left analog stick in the opposite direction to get him centered. He needs to stay centered for some arbitrary period before the horse accepts him as his master. Nice work! I think that'll do it for today. Let's get back to the ranch! I like your father! I'm glad! He's quite a character! You have a good life here. The life I want. For me and my family, I mean. We don't have a lot anymore. You have enough. It's one that gets so many folks in trouble. It'll sap your spirit and make you poor. But it's straight. And it's decent. There's no better night's sleep than after an honest day's work. It's no wonder you look so tired, then. Some deck must be shy a joker, Miss McFarland. Hmm. Horse physics. You'd be such a natural at busting Broncos. That was fun. I think you could be a fine rancher one day. If you can bear to stop killing people for a living. Sure. Yeah. Well done, Mr. Marston. These are fine horses. Hey, Bonnie. Amos was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. Come on, Mr. Marston. Let's head for Armadillo. So, it's time for hunting a fresh round of horses. So we can race them all, send the loosers off to the glue factory. Aside from the snobbery, that is. You sure ask a lot. I'm just surprised, that's all. You must have been quite a catch. The fact that you're talking in the past says it all. No, that's not what I mean. You must have had some suitors, that's all I'm saying. Some, I suppose. Here and there. A ranch in the middle of Hennigan's stead ain't really the place to find a husband. Amos, he's a little, well, you know, countryfied. Where'd you get your airs and graces, Miss McFarland? From a couple of cheap governesses Paul hired to save us from being savages. I'd like to talk about more than just cattle and chickens sometimes, that's all. And after my brother left, it was up to me to become the man of the ranch. He'd never admit it, but my paw's a lot frailer than he looks. You're worth two of any man I know, miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. Here's a fun fact. I wasn't sure if glue factories had been invented yet, but apparently the first glue factory in the United States opened in 1899. So there you go. A woman in a man's world. 
You don't talk about her very much. It's kind of painful, but she's never far from my thoughts. There's my boys. Come on, Mr. Marston. Let's drive them up the canyon where it narrows. We'll trap them there. And now we're straight into round two with the horses. This time we have to drive them like cattle to a specific point on the map. But this time, the herd don't act as a single unit. It can get pretty frustrating. Bonnie says she's going to send us a signal, but she doesn't actually send one. So I'm standing here waiting for nothing, when I could be rounding up horses. Forward. No, 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 don't go off in another direction. Oh, you asshole. Come on. Thankfully the horses tend to rubber band a little bit, but... Oh, no, you're going in the... you're going in the wrong direction. I'm going the complete wrong way. My name is Belger, and this is Let's Play Catch a Really Fucking Annoying Horse. Come on. You have to chase down this bolting horse using your horse and a lasso. It's pretty difficult, but I guess now would be a good time to walk through the lasso mechanics. The lasso operates in a similar way to a gun. You press L2 to bring up the reticle, and R2 to throw the, the lasso. If it latches onto a target, it'll automatically slip tight, and you'll be able to either catch a horse, or hog tie a man, that sort of thing. Unfortunately, aiming and lassoing a running horse isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Finally. It's all right. Relax now. Nearly there. I'm going to kill this horse. I got you. You're mine now. Hold on. Come on, baby. Calm down. Calm down now. That wasn't so bad. Come on, easy up now. So now we get to witness a great bug where the game forgets to spawn Bonnie, so I can't actually return to her. Whoa. Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own? As a thank you from all of us. Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal. <sighs> well, that's it for this video. Next time we'll be acting like an ambulance and seeing the sights of Armadillo. See you then.